Hola and welcome to my channel Clear Vision. My name is Simon, I'm a psychotherapist and all of my videos here are based on my experiences as a psychotherapist and working with people. Um, and I try and share some of that to help people out there. I don't share specific details. So please like and subscribe and leave any comments or feedback in the comment section below because it does really, really does help the channel. This week's video is going to be about how to spot a bad uh, guru stroke healer stroke therapist that uh, <laughs> there's an awful lot of uh, information out there on Instagram there's uh, an Instagram social media YouTube there's an awful lot of gurus helpers healers therapists and there are, are some shocking things I've seen frankly um, and I don't want to sort of start doing you know critique videos um, that's not my thing I'd, I'd rather empower people but there are a few things you can look for when selecting um, I'll, I'll bring it under the umbrella term of a, a healer there's some obvious ones such as you know references qualifications maybe you're not interested in that the, the big one is whether or not you can actually connect with them if you can connect with them chances are the healing's going to really, really work. If you can't connect with your healer, it doesn't mean they're not good, it just means they're not for you. You're going to struggle to build a relationship with them and the relationship is very, very important. So there are some things to be mindful of at the beginning. One thing I would say is advice, advice giving. And I know this kind of video is advice giving. Um, so you have to be careful with advice giving. If you are sitting in front of someone and they are constantly giving you advice, telling you what decisions to make, telling you what to do with your life, telling you which choice you should make. I would strongly urge you to reconsider who you're seeing. And actually, I'd strongly urge you to not see them again. There is a difference in advice. Some therapists, uh, healers uh, can give advice, can give kind of like advice based on experience. So they're drawing from their own personal experience, they're drawing from the experience that's been shared by other people and they're offering to you that to you, but still offering you, you know, still allowing you the choice. And that's the key. Advice without choice is, and without explanation or without exploring all outcomes, is not empowering. Okay, that's someone dictating your life to you and you've given them that power, which means you can actually take that back. So that's the first one. Okay, so the second one is uh, people telling you it's going to be okay. This again comes kind of under advice giving and it's like someone's telling you that they have access essentially to some kind of divine wisdom that you don't have access to and that they know it's going to be all right for you. Now there's nothing wrong with giving words of encouragement. But to say to someone simply and flatly, don't worry about it, it's gonna be all right, does not help anybody at all. That's acting on ego, and it's, it's a foolhardy uh, response to someone's, it also plays down what someone's experiencing. So if you find yourself in that situation and they're going, you know, it's okay, don't worry, it'll be all right in the end, um, or it's, you know, um, uh, it's, it's okay to be not okay, you know, kind of, really really consider what's being said here because they're coming from a place of like I said some kind of authority now a skilled helper healer therapist would maybe reflect back to you how far you've come in life what adversities you've managed to transcend because you will have you're just not doing so well at the moment by yourself you know that's why you're in therapy or seeking help seeking guidance so if someone's able to go well, hey you know you know in your moments of kind of like self-doubt well hey if you have you considered you know how far you've come and you managed to get over that obstacle and you know you might not have done it to the way that you really would have liked to have done it but you actually are still here you're still standing you're still breathing you're still functioning albeit not how you want to but you have managed to get this far in life our words of encouragement maybe not always suitable but it depends on the situation and again you know it, you would need more context someone telling you everything's going to be okay I would seriously seriously consider who you're seeing at that 
point because it it comes from it, it brings nothing but inertia it stops you in your tracks so it doesn't empower it doesn't help you grow it's rescuing it's reassuring and it has no foundation underneath it to be quite honest so avoid number three would be if you notice that your healer is operating on their own agenda you would notice this through them pulling things out of the air that you haven't really quite mentioned so i would go with putting words in your mouth now there's nothing wrong with the healer paraphrasing what you say or even offering forward that actually when you said that you look quite upset but leave it as an open-ended question you know you look quite upset it's 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 opening an avenue of inquiry it's opening an avenue of exploration as opposed to you look really upset and why wouldn't you be it's very defining and they're acting on their own agenda they're also kind of keeping you in their realm of perception and a good healer or, a guru or a therapist or guru will enter into your realm of perception and try to understand your world and how you operate now they might and they should get you to look in other directions, get you to consider other things, get you to you know turn situations upside down, look underneath and blah, 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 and consider other things, but they won't tell you if they're good. This industry, the industry of healers and gurus and, and therapists and psychologists and all the rest of it attracts a lot of people with strong narcissistic or sociopathic tendencies because it's a position of power, it's a position of authority. Someone comes to you, you go to see someone saying, I can't manage this, I don't know how to deal with this, I don't know how to change this, but you clearly do, or perhaps you do, because you. this is what you do for a living, is you help people. Like I say, that, that does attract um, the slightly darker side of human nature as well because it's automatically a position of power. So if you find someone operating on an agenda, they're not actually listening to you. They're not taking into consideration things for you. If they're plucking things out of the air that you haven't mentioned, for instance, I've seen this one and I've seen this one by someone who is, who is hugely popular and has quite a following. Why does your father hate you? And you see the client struggling to answer the question because the question is founded on no evidence the question is founded on an assumption and it's on an agenda and then they back it up with something clever like you know this is shadow work you know you're doing now you're doing shadow work so why does your father hate you why do you do this why is this and you know and you can if you find yourself struggling to answer a question and i don't mean struggling to answer a question like how does a certain situation make you feel that's a if you find that question difficult maybe it's because it's a painful thing to look at maybe it's because you don't have the emotional language maybe because you can't describe it so you know try using metaphors symbology images all the rest of it um which your guru the healer therapist should encourage but if you find yourself struggling to answer a question because the reality of the question is it's not founded on any evidence it's not true then you really, really seriously need to consider walking away because this is an egotistical manipulation to make them look more powerful. So you really, really need to walk away. It's often done by people who are unskilled and really don't know what they're doing and they are operating on their own agenda. They are operating to make themselves look more powerful, to feel more powerful, to feel wiser, to feel uh, whatever they want to feel. And the thing that, that is a good thing to acknowledge if you are a client is because you're stuck at an impasse, because you're stuck in some quagmire, whatever it is that's going on for you, you are looking for guidance. You give over your power and you put your healer, people can have a tendency to put their healer, their guru, somebody who has all the answers. And so when they ask a question, a difficult question, which, is, which has no relevance and is not true, you, people do try to answer it because they want to do the work, they want to explore. And it's like, well, they must have asked that question because they're an expert. So therefore I better try and answer it. And if you're really trying to answer a question and it's like, mm, it's just, I can't do this, really, really question it. Now, difficult questions, difficult challenges are good things within therapeutic environment. They're good things to work with. 
So, and a good healer will, as opposed to telling you, again, we're on that love vein, they will notice, they will offer forward. I noticed that you talk about these family members, but you never mention this family member, or if you do, you skip past them really quick and you seem to tense or you seem to, they're observing what's going on and they're reflecting it back at you and offering it as an open avenue of exploration if you wish to go there. This is someone operating on a high skill level. This is someone who's operating for your benefit, for your growth, for your empowerment. And if that's happening to you and you're finding it extremely uncomfortable, I would urge you to keep working with it because often where the discomfort is is where the work needs to be done. But every guru, healer, therapist should, the, if they had an agenda at all, it should be that I want my clients to leave empowered and not need me anymore. I want them to make decisions for themselves. I want them to self-regulate. I want them to operate in the world and reach their full potential. And a lot of therapists will try and hold on to people and they'll keep looking for little bits of misery, keep little, looking for little, for little things to tackle, little to keep that dynamic running because that dynamic's giving them something. They're getting something from being a therapist. Uh, but ultimately, if you find yourself, and if you find yourself in that cycle, then leave. But if you find yourself in a cycle of, oh, I'm needing them less and less, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with things, I'm changing things, I'm, you know, then you're with somebody who's skilled, you're with somebody who knows what they're doing. So look out for own agendas and people putting words in your mouth and people offering you questions which don't seem to have any, which seem to have been plucked out of the air, you know, they're based on assumptions, so avoid assumptions. And the last thing, just for the purposes of this uh, video, there's a lot of things you can look for, but the last thing I would look for is the encouragement of magic thinking. And before a lot of people roll their eyes, I'm, I'm quite into magic thinking. I, I'm very, very open to stuff, to journaling, letter writing, to the universe, whatever. What I'm talking about here is if you find yourself being encouraged that you have the ability to manipulate the external, to change the external without changing the internal. So, you know, yeah, cast a spell. I mean, a popular one is, you know, manifest your ex back or spells for getting your ex back or, you know, manifest abundance, spells for abundance. Well, if you uh, find yourself being advised that, yeah, basically you just kind of like align everything and you think about it and you wish it, it's gonna happen. No. It's not, sorry. If you really, really want to take that deeper and you really, really want to make that effective. And you, so first of all, before I go off on that topic, if you find yourself in this position, you are being, you are being given some kind of false power. You are being told that you're a magical person and you can manipulate the environment around you, people in it, without doing any work on yourself. So avoid. What? would be better and what would be more effective is okay this this is and this links into another video about you know changing your life what do i what do i want well i want to manifest more abundance i want to manifest well, i don't know a, a lover into my life or my ex or whatever it is it begins on the internal what do i have to do to change myself about myself in order to manifest the things in life, attract things in life to me that I want. Well, that the, the real power in that lies within looking at how you need to change the internal. If you change the internal, the external tends to follow suit because you change your boundaries, you change your likes, you change your dislikes, you change what you're willing to, with, what you're willing to tolerate. So if you want abundance of money, you might need to, and you find yourself, let's say you're, um, you've got quite a low education, um, you're not exactly motivated, you're working a dead end job, if at all, your routine's terrible, you're eating shit food, you have a negative way of thinking, you don't exercise. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things there, which if you actually worked on, would begin to manifest a healthier, 
you would begin to manifest what you want. You would begin to manifest a healthier attitude, a healthier outlook, a healthier mindset, a healthier body towards achieving the things that you want to achieve. Um, if, you, if you hate money and you think money's evil, you know, and you begin to change that kind of aspect, or you, know, you don't want to have, you know, you, you take pride in your poverty, well, you're never going to have abundance. You know, because you think people who have money and things are arrogant and rich and materialistic and it's all part of the consumer world and capitalism, well, abundance is going to be difficult for you. So you have to change things within yourself in order to change the external. Um, and the same with lovers, partners, family relationships. You cannot change other people. Other people have free will, other people have their things, they have their paradigms they're operating from, their perspectives. It's an awful lot for you to try and magically change. But if you change yourself and you change your reactions and you change how you think about yourself and you change how you regard certain situations, is it as disastrous as I think? Then chances are you are going to manifest yourself into a and grow, manifest you a difference in yourself, which will in turn affect the external and you'll manifest more there. You'll be more proactive. Manifestation doesn't mean sitting at home wishing for it, which is a lot what a lot of gurus and healers kind of try to push onto you. It doesn't work that way. You have to make changes within. So yeah, I hope that helps. Please leave any comments and feedback in the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And in the meantime, until I see you next time, please take good care of yourselves. Adios.